the JMU Dukes are back at it again, and this time we're facing off against a tough Georgia Tech team. Now, we've lost to Georgia Tech in the past, but this year, I gotta say, we switched to a 4-3 defense in the middle of the season, we got a little bit of a personnel change. We are ready for this team. Now, in terms of the ACC Atlantic standings, we are one game behind pretty much Florida State with one loss. They haven't lost a single game, but hopefully, we can catch up to them. Now, before we kick off our game against Georgia Tech this week, look at how the top 25 is playing, specifically the top four. Now, Florida State, the only team we've lost to this season is sitting at number one. They are pretty much the best team in the nation. USC is at number two and Oregon is at three, but look who plays each other. Oregon and USC square off at USC this week, so one of those teams is going to lose, and if we win our game against a tough Georgia Tech opponent, we're pretty much guaranteed to be into the number three spot. After us at four, you see Notre Dame, Ohio State, Alabama's in the top ten now. Uh, you see Pittsburgh, Washington State, Tennessee, and Wisconsin were all unranked last week and came in, and UTEP rounds out your top 25. For your Heisman vote, not a single JMU Duke, and I'm not surprised with how many injuries and how spotty we've been this season, but Mike Weber, Tanner Mangum, A.J. Bush, Ronald Jones II, and Taylor Alley are all up there in your top five for the Heisman vote. For those of you interested in a recruiting update, we have landed seven total players. Now, we have Stuart Price, Deion Ostrander, and Caleb Cole, a lot of those guys you've seen before. We also have Seth Young, who's a Juco transfer coming in. We have Matt Fields, who's an athlete at 5'11". We've got Chris Cox, who's a 59 overall receiver. And you might be asking, why would you go get a 59 overall receiver? Well, look at his height. The dude is 6'6", 220 pounds. He's got pretty good speed. So if nothing else, he could be a cheap man's Randy Moss, which will be good, especially in the red zone. And then the last play we've landed so far is Eric Stewart. We've got a free safety there. We have plenty of other positions we're trying to get, but let me know in the comments down below, what position should I be trying to lock in for JMU? next season. And we're going to start the game with Joe Disher, who on paper looks like he had a good game, but don't forget the turnovers that got him pulled out of the ball game. If you're Joe Disher for JMU right now, you have got to be hoping you can have a turnover-free game. That is desperately what this young fella needs. I mean, he's had too many turnovers, and the coaching staff, they're not happy with him. But even with Disher having two late and costly turnovers, he played pretty well. I mean, you got to admit, five touchdowns is nothing to shake a stick at. And here again, he's throwing it on the run. He finds Sean McMahon, who catches that one. What a dot at the line of scrimmage. JMU also found out today that they're getting Cameron King back next week. So if they can be patient this week, they will get their starting running back as well. So far, so good for Joe Disher. He has been lighting up this Georgia Tech defense so far. And look again, Drew Coach finding some room. And Drew Coach is now down inside the 10. We got a two-back set in the backfield. This one goes to Taylor Woods. Taylor Woods tries to find a little bit of room, but they stop him for a loss of one. JMU quickly has found themselves in third and goal territory. Now across the middle, we see Daniel, or we see Smith, Clay Smith, excuse me, not Daniel Clements. Clay Smith goes in for a 13-yard touchdown. Joe Disher on that drive had a couple of bad runs, but four for four, got the touchdown, and laid JMU down the field easily. Georgia Tech moves under center, they go to the triple option, and this is what makes it so difficult, but a forced fumble on the first play of the game. Unfortunately, Georgia Tech ends up, you know, recovering that one, but what a hit by King Ortiz Jr. to set the tempo. Now, don't forget, on third and seven, Georgia Tech will see the 4-3 defense for the first time all season long for JMU. Now, the ball stood over here, Oliver's gonna whiff, Gene Jr. is gonna bring him down, but at first down by Georgia Tech. Last time we had Georgia Tech on third down, it didn't really go so well. Now, we're gonna try with a little bit of a blitz here. The ball stood out to the right, and it looks like he does not get his foot in. Rick Adams is one for four on that drive. Fourth and ten, time to punt. A new set of downs for JMU. Now we're going to hand the ball off this time to Sharp. Sharp's got some room out here. Sharp with the juke move, and he gets the first. What a play by the young guy. Here on first and ten again, we can get Sean McMahon moving into the backfield now. He's going to set up shot. Joe Disher fakes the handoff, pitches it out to McMahon. McMahon's got some room here. He literally goes nowhere, though. Only three yards in that carry. Second and seven now, we're going to see Disher in the shotgun again. It's been money all game long. He's got a guy underneath with the pressure in his face. He finds Drew Coates again. Another catch for Drew Coates. Joe Disher is a perfect five for five so far into Today's game. He goes to the halfback screen and Sharp is wide open. He's got some blocks here and Sharp is going to get ankle tackled down after a 15 yard gain. No big pickup for JMU. The ball's now down inside the 30. Now we're going to move a little bit. Joe Disher has some pressure in his face. He's going to try to run and he gets lit up. Where is the blocking from the offensive line? Definitely non existent on that play. After a bad sack there, Disher's going to try to reclaim a little bit here. He's got Disher wide open in the flats. He's going to find him. Joe Disher go, oh, excuse me, Jordan Dawson's going to move a little bit. Jordan Dawson runs through people to make it third and one. What a big carry and gain by him. On third and short, Taylor Woods comes into the game instead of Trey Sharp. And Woods is going to get stopped. Loss of a yard there, making it fourth and two. Looks like a field goal for JMU. On fourth and two, JMU actually opts to go for it here. So they're going to keep it with Disher. Disher's going to go up the middle. And I think he actually got that one. A two-yard rush by Disher is just enough to get the first. Now Sharp is back in the ball. Game. Looks like he got banged up a little bit earlier. We're going to see an underneath round here to Clay Smith. Clay Smith already has one touchdown. He goes for the juke, and they bring him down at the five. Beautiful move, and nearly broke that one off for a touchdown. Now, Georgia Tech has been running the triple option all game long, so we're going to give him a taste of their own medicine and see how it works. Now, a good little fake here by Disher. He pitches it out to McMahon, and McMahon is stood up. 
Running a triple option against Georgia Tech, probably not the best decision. Setting up on second and goal, it's time for a passing play here. Now Disher again, rolling, rolling. He's got some pressure now. He's going to go over here. He's going to try to run it. Joe Disher keeps this one, and he goes into the end zone. Most importantly, does not fumble it. He's got a passing touchdown. He's got a rushing touchdown. And just like that, JMU has a 14-0 lead. Here we go. Georgia Tech back at it again. They're running this time. They pitch it out. We've got an opportunity, but Branch. Branch is going to miss. That was a horrible tackle attempt. Holloway's following up here. Holloway is going to bring him down after a major run. 42 yards there by Cersei. Georgia Tech got this, got the confidence they need now. We're going to see Ortiz blitzing in. This ball's thrown over top, and it's a dot by there. Lynch with a 16-yard grab. Georgia Tech is driving. The confidence is fully there now. They're going to go again to the triple option. They pitch it out this time, and Holmes is going to try to stop him, but Charles Tuck comes in for the gang tackle after only a yard gain. We're going to keep the pressure on Georgia Tech now. They're going to see what they can do here. Under center again by Georgia Tech. We're trying to get some pressure there. Leggett's going to keep this one. Leggett goes up and gets a first now. First and goal for the Yellow Jackets again. They're putting the pressure on. They go for the triple option, and we didn't see the fullback dive coming. Lance Davis gets in for the first touchdown of the day for Georgia Tech, and just like that, they're right back in this game. After a major return, JMU now has good field position. They're going to opt to go with here with the run. Trey Sharp up the middle again. All this dude does is get first downs. we got to give him the ball more. 11 yards on that rush. After a successful run in the last part, they're going to opt to go here again. Now Trey Sharp again looking for some room. He's got some. He's going to get out here. Goes for the spin move, but it doesn't work. Only six yards there. Third and four. Needing a first down here because Georgia Tech, they're actually doing pretty well on offense. And we find Trey Sharp wide open. No one even close to him. The double juke is nasty. He goes for a spin move. Somehow gets back into the open field. What a 12-yard catch there to get another first for JMU. Two minutes left here in the first half, and JMU is continuing to drive. Now a pass in a dicey spot goes to Jordan Dawson, who catches it right there on the two. First and goal again for JMU. We're looking for something. We got Jordan Dawson rolling, but we can't get it to him. It's too late, and Disher is sacked for a loss of eight now. A bad sack makes second and goal from about the 11 now. Again, JMU driving. Got an opportunity to pass across the middle. Goes to Clay Smith, who catches that one. Clay Smith, a big-time players make big-time plays. Two touchdowns in the day for Joe Disher. A perfect 11 for 11. Way better than he's been all season or in his career. Career. Big time moment there for Disher. Now Georgia Tech is wasting the clock a little bit, assuming they're going to run here, but we're watching for a pass just in case. And they go for a run, we end up stopping them. We call a timeout. Now we got an opportunity to get the ball back with 30 seconds left and make another score happen. Even though Joe Disher has played extremely well in this game, we've seen it happen before, specifically last week. Now here we see him find Clay Smith, and Clay Smith is going to move down to inside i believe the 30 what a play another big play by disher and again we're trying to keep the mojo going for joe disher he's got an opportunity here he's going to float one inside it's going to be close but it's picked off by hill under thrown on that one a two toe tap and an interception with nine seconds left in the first half so going into halftime after disher's unfortunate interception it's a 21 7 lead we have to do better We'll see what we can do. Outside of one unfortunate drive, the JMU defense has been good today. Now we're going to see what we can get a stop here. We're missing tackle. This triple option is difficult to defend. If you've ever seen it before from Georgia Tech, you know it's tough. But what JMU needs the most right now is a strong showing here. Now we're going to see if we can get some pressure on the quarterback who's throwing rarely here. This one is way out of bounds. I mean, you can tell they don't really throw the ball a ton. Now the clock winding down on third and one. They're going to opt to go for something here. We hit him with Branch, but he's wide open. King Ortiz is going to try to get to him. Charles Tutt is racing to try to get him down. He breaks a couple times. Tackles for Shai Jean Jr. ultimately gets him, but what a play call by Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech continues to find good drives. Maybe it's luck, maybe it's skill, but they are finding holes in our defense. Second and eight now again. Lynch moves under center. Cersei's gonna move around a little bit. A little bit of a fake there. Somehow Lynch is gonna keep this one. He pitches it out. He might get into the end zone here. Branch is our only line of defense. The hit stick does not work, and Clinton Lynch on a miraculous play after the pitch by the quarterback gets into the end zone. A team like Georgia Tech is difficult to defend because no one else really in the country that you play against runs that sort of offense. So you don't really game plan against it. And then you find yourself just getting exposed time after time. Now, Henry Castle out here with the juke and then absolute destruction. I mean, Henry Castle killed on that play, but he seems fine. 27 yards. It's imperative that JMU continues to score, however. Put some pressure on this defense, put some numbers on the board, and just find holes in this defense. Now, Clay Smith is out here running, breaks multiple tackles. He's off to the races and down inside the 15 after a 41-yard grab. Now, Sharp's in the backfield with Disher. We're going to go to a halfback draw. It looks to be wide open, but Disher is, excuse me, Sharp gets tackled after three. We got second and seven out. Again, inside the 10. We're going to hand it off to Trey Sharp, who's got some room. He's going to try to get into the end zone, but they drop him just shy after a nine-yard gain. First and goal now. Again, Sharp in the backfield he's going to get some room here he goes for some sort of juke but he, he can't go anywhere he runs into his own guy loss of four. Second and goal after a bad run there we're going to see if we can get some improvement now we do see Dotson underneath Dotson catches that one after it was deflected five yard touchdown reception could have been picked off 
could have been dropped, but Jordan Dodson, the most reliable hands in the team, gets an, a score in the end zone to make it a two-score lead. You've got to get pressure on Georgia Tech and figure out this rushing attack. Now, Leggett is out here just moving all over the place. The agility he has is insane. First and 10, trying to find some way to stop this triple option. And there we go. We had an opportunity to get it, but we could not stop him. Rick Adams is finding seams. The fullbacks are finding holes, and we just can't stop them. We have to find a way to plug the middle and stop this triple option, because if we don't, Georgia Tech is going to continue to run at it. They're pancaking everyone on our team. We need a fumble or some kind of turnover. At this stage, the only chance we have to stop this is to go to a goal line defense no matter where we are. So look, we're trying to stop, and what a choke slam there on the edge. It finally worked. We found a way to stop that rushing attack. It seems like we may have found a defense to finally stop this triple option. Now again, we're going to see what we can do here. But oh no, we're not going to be in a good move. What is happening? Rick Adams literally tore his ACL twice somehow on that play. I literally no answer for how that man scored. No matter what the JMU defense does, even calling goal line, they have no way to stop that triple option attack. So our only course of action right now is to just keep scoring on offense. If we can keep doing that, we might just be fine. Now, Disher is scrambling, finding some room, gets the first down, and smartly, because he doesn't want to fumble again, gets out of bounds like a veteran quarterback should. Third and eight, and Disher needs to make sure this offense gets a first down. They are desperately in need of one. Now, they do have a guy wide open here. This one is batted away at the last second. Smith was wide open. The pass comes in a little bit eight, and we're going to be forced to punt it on fourth and eight. So going into fourth quarter, that lead we had that was two touchdowns is down to one. We didn't get the third down conversion, and we might be in trouble. At this point, we're focusing all of our attention on the quarterback and the running backs the receivers we have to imagine they aren't really going to do much to us now we're going to we look we look for the pitch man there and it didn't work brand what is this rick adams just breaks tackles non-stop this is a robo qb if i've ever seen one we're trying to find some sort of defense to stop this rushing attack but it seems nearly impossible but what a hit by branch on cersei moving into the pistol now for georgia tech Looks like a little bit of a run here by the QB, but Ari's Cole is there to stuff him in the backfield to make it third and ten. Big stop by the JMU defense. We're going to see if Georgia Tech actually passes or if they stick with the running game, which has been working all game long. But they are actually passing here. Now a pass goes through and a huge hit and a huge catch. Brad Stewart holds on to that one at the highest point. This game is coming down to the wire. With four minutes left, Georgia Tech is knocking on the doorsteps of the end zone. So again, Adams under center, goes a little bit of a, fake, a play fake. He gets stuck there in the backfield. We're trying to get anyone to him. He falls down, trips over his own lineman, and it's a loss of seven. We find ourselves at second and long now for Georgia Tech. We're trying to get out to the edge, but a huge hit off the edge this time. Rick Adams somehow gets stuffed to make it third and 20. Big hit by Holloway. So at third and 20, Georgia Tech definitely has to pass here. No chance they're going to actually run the ball, right? Adams here in the pocket, he throws it, and Ari's Cole is back in pass protection, somehow makes a huge play. He's a lineman, can't make the interception, but now it's fourth and 20. Now, JMU sees they line up for a field goal, but we're a little skeptical if they're going to fake it, what they're going to do with it. So we're going to drop Branch back just in case he can actually catch this one. And this one's going to be close. Branch is right there, but he misses it. He misjudges it, just like Georgia Tech misjudges that field goal, and that one's going to be a miss. Keep it going now, JMU. Get the offense going. Get some first downs here. Now, Trey Sharp out to the edge with a nice juke inside. Again, staying in bounds, which is a smart play. JMU is looking to waste some clock here. Disher again at the line in shotgun. We might have Jordan Dodson wide open here. We're going to throw one over. We float that to Jordan Dodson. Jordan Dodson's got the wheels, and he's pushing down the sideline. He's breaking the tackle, carrying a defender inside the 10. And just like that, JMU is exactly where they want to be, nearly in the end zone again. Now that we're inside the red zone, Georgia Tech has used their first timeout. So here we go. Second and goal, giving the ball to Trey Sharp. He's going through the middle. He has the ball. Gets dropped after a four-yard gain to make it third and goal. Another timeout for Georgia Tech. So third. Third and goal. If we can score, this game is over. Now up the middle for Trey Sharp, and he's into the end zone. A three-yard touchdown run for Trey Sharp. Didn't get the ball a ton today. Split some carries with Taylor Woods, but that was a big-time player making a big-time play. Second and 12 now. Rick Adams make his, makes an adjustment at the line. Xavier Lewis trying to get some pressure on him. This ball is going to be thrown deep. Charles Tutt is there. Charles Tutt makes a horrible read. Does not get him. They drop him to make it first and goal. Looks like he just fell asleep there at the last second and didn't even go up for the interception. Lost track of the ball completely. JMU is bringing the house on this play. What are they going to do? QB sneak, fullback dive? Looks like a sack there by Curtis Holmes. Second and goal now. This game is not over yet, and JMU is trying to keep Georgia Tech out of the end zone. So we're watching for the fullback dive. Looks like Rick Adams cannot go anywhere, and another stop of him in the backfield. Big time play by JMU again. Third and goal. Will they run it? Will they pass it? What are they going to do now? They go with the QB. Reed and Rick Adams gets into the end zone. Three-yard touchdown run makes it only a single-score game now. Georgia Tech lines up for the onside kick. If they get this, we could possibly be in trouble, but this one is going to be bobbled around. This one is recovered by Georgia Tech. Unbelievable. It hit multiple JMU players 
but they couldn't come up with it. This could be a horrible upset for JMU if they don't come out here with a win, especially because they're playing at home. This one's going to be close. Again, Rick Adams out here throwing a ball. That one is dropped at the last second. Great play there by Oliver. Second and 10 now again. We're looking for some sort of stop. This ball's thrown out to the left. This one's going to be close. Can we get this man before he gets out of bounds? We force him out. 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left. Georgia Tech is driving again. They're going back to the passing game. What will they do? Rick Adams tries to scramble, but Xavier Lewis is there to stop him. A sack again. After spiking the ball and make it third and 13 now, Rick Adams is looking for some sort of way to lead his team to victory. This one's thrown deep. We got Oliver out there. Oliver jumps up. This one is batted away. Huge play. Thankfully, Charles Tuck wasn't there because he may have messed that one up. This is down for the last count. This is the game right here. Can JMU get a stop when they need it the most? And this one's going to be close. This one is nearly caught, but they turn it over. That is a ball game, folks. After a game that was way too close for comfort, JMU still got the W, which is all that matters. Now, Joe Disher goes 16 of 19, three touchdowns, one interception, which really wasn't his fault. It was kind of a Hail Mary into the end zone. Got sacked twice, but still good performance overall by Disher. On the rushing game, we saw Trey Sharp go for 56. We saw Disher go for 12, McMahon for two, and Taylor Woods didn't really have the best game. In the air, Clay Smith was by far the best receiver this afternoon five catches for 106 yards two touchdowns followed by jordan dyson who got in the end zone drew coach had a solid game as well as trey sharp and then henry castle and sean mcmahon both had big catches of their own and on defense we saw curtis holmes with eight big tackles three of them being for a loss a lot of those coming at the end of the game king ortiz played pretty well he saw charles tub blow a huge pass play but still he got the job done when he needed to from a sack perspective, Xavier Lewis had two, McClendon had one, and that was pretty much it. From an interception perspective, we didn't have a single one. But still, JMU's defense didn't play the best, but they got the job done at the end. If you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more, make sure you guys crush the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more JMU episodes. Check the playlist on the screen and watch another one right now, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.